looking for a place where you can make yourself acquainted completely with IELTS for free. Yes, you are at the right place. We as Leap Scholar are developing a complete course for free for all of you. There is a link in the description for the complete playlist. Do refer to it. Okay, so today we are going to look at note, table, flowchart and summary completion task in IELTS listening. There are various videos uh, that I have covered on IELTS listening. Please refer to those videos. There's a link in the description of the complete playlist as I mentioned before. So yes, let's understand today what note, table, flowchart and summary completion is all about. The idea is pretty simple uh, whenever you are attending a lesson or you are listening to someone speak, you, have, you are attending a seminar, right? What you have to do is you have to write down notes. So this is just the same thing, right? How do we write down notes? So there is a whole lesson video at glance so that you only watch this video if it is relevant for you. There are four things that I'm going to cover. First, how do these tasks look like? Note completion, table completion, uh, flow chart and summary completion, right? I'm going to give you some tips and tricks to solve these tasks. Yes, keep your pencil and paper ready so that we can solve a task together. And yes, towards the end, I'm going to give you a bonus tip. So stay tuned. Now, uh, let's look at note completion task. The idea is pretty simple. This is, uh, this is a task in front of you and write no more than two words and or a number for each answer. So right, this is how note completion task is going to look like. I mean, these are complete notes, but in these blanks, you will have to fill the words or a number by listening to, to an audio. Right, now there's a table completion task. This is how it is going to look like, right? The idea is pretty simple. There's a complete table and you will have to just listen to the audio and write down the words or a number if it is asked. Read the question carefully before you attempt any task. Right. Now let's take a look at how flowchart completion task is going to look like. Do not worry, I'm going to tell you how to solve all these tasks, but just right now making you aware how these tasks look like. Now this is a flowchart completion, right? This is like a flowchart, right? First this, then this, then this. You know, we make flowcharts a lot, right? Uh, so again, reading the question is paramount, right? No more than two words for each answer, right? Okay, so this is how it is going to look like, right? Feed it uh, in your brain. Look at a summary completion task, how it is going to look like. The idea is pretty simple. There is going to be summary, right? Summary is what? When you listen to something uh, completely and then you write it down in your own words, you, you write down a summary of it, right? So there are going to be blanks in that also. You will listen to the audio and you will uh, write down words or a number uh, according to the question, right? Don't worry, we are going to practice a task that will uh, make you even more aware. So till now, uh, what all have I covered? We looked at how different tasks look like, right? We looked at note completion task, table completion, flowchart and summary completion. Let's look at tips and tricks. How do we solve these tasks together? Okay, now let's look at note completion. The idea is pretty simple in note completion, right? The way you make notes. In note completion task, you have a series of notes related to the recording you listen to. There are some gaps and you need to write down the missing information. Pretty simple, right? Now, the point here to note is that uh, unlike sentence completion, and in note completion, you don't have to worry about uh, what you write being grammatically correct. It's often going to be just individual words or numbers right do refer to the sentence completion video the link is in the description uh, in in the sentence completion part we have to make sure that we write down the word that is grammatically correct because obviously it is a sentence right and sentence changes if you change the grammar 
right but you do not have to worry about anything like this in node completion right because obviously it is going to be uh, very often you will uh, deal with individual words or numbers in the audio and you just write it down right so this is about node completion now let's uh, see again I told you that this is how node completion task is going to look like right take a good look at it cool now uh, table completion task I showed you the table uh, just before uh, the idea is very simple table completion task is also very similar to node completion task right uh, you have to listen to numbers of, of of words related to clear categories right for example here we are talking about gallery one right so here we're talking about time right this is gallery two we're talking about event right theater one we're talking about admission price here right so we have different categories in, in, in the table, right? So you have to listen to the audio and you have to fill those categories. Make sure you read the instructions carefully. Okay, let's look at flowchart completion task. There's a reason why I am explaining all these four tasks to you at once. Because they all are same to the node completion task, right? Flowchart completion task, it's also like node completion and can be very similar to form completion task. Uh, if you will refer to my uh, second video on form completion task, again the link is in the description. There is a form and you uh, just have to fill the words. The way you fill the form, for example, you go to a hospital or you go to a gym, there is a form, you have to fill it. So uh, do refer to the video if you have any doubts uh, or if you haven't seen it at all right uh, so form completion and note completion tasks they are also pretty similar right but yes form is different and making notes is different now this is how a uh, flowchart completion is going to look like as I told you right you will just have to listen to the audio and you'll have to write down the words now when it comes to summary completion summary completion tasks again they are very similar to note completion task uh, though you do not work with note there would be a complete text in front of you right here as I showed you before this is a complete text obviously this is a summary right how you summarize something so this is a summary and there will be blanks and you'll have to fill those blanks while listening to the audio now we have uh, looked at how these different tasks look like right we uh, looked at uh, how we are going to tackle them right what exactly is going to be there in 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 these tasks right how they are similar to each other we have looked at various things now let's move on and looks at uh, let's move on and look at how we uh, tackle them how how do we deal with them yes we can practice a node completion task together but as i said wait uh, let me give you some tips so that we are able to do it efficiently and accurately cool so again this is the most important thing that we have to take care of we cannot overlook it I have reiterated this point because if you do not read the instructions carefully you might or you will write down uh, three words if the question is asking for two words and you go for three words the answer is wrong right so make sure you read the instructions and you are sure about how many words you can use in your answer right now read through the question and related text or image before you listen so you can start to predict the answer or prepare to listen for certain information right I'm not very sure how many of you are aware about this but if you have watched my previous videos you do get time before the audio plays to read the questions right so you read the questions clearly and you make sure that you predict what kind of answers are we expecting right for example for a particular blank what do we have to write down in it right we can predict always predict now let's practice a note completion task together please bring down your pencil and an A4 size paper and write down 31 to 40 on it okay or if you have time you can take a print out of this paper and uh, you can start practicing with me right I'll not lie to you I have already 
uh, done this on my own. Right, so I'm going to play an audio, we are going to do it together. So are we ready? Okay, let's bring the audio. Now turn to section 4. Section 4. You will hear the first lecture of a course in development studies. First you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Good morning everyone and welcome to your first lecture in development studies. Development studies as a discipline can be boiled down to a couple of core objectives. Basically, we are trying to understand how it is that societies experience particular kinds of change and how they progress as they develop. We're also trying to go beyond that, however, and work out how different sorts of actions can facilitate or even encourage these changes to happen. To achieve these objectives, there are two key approaches that underpin development studies. Firstly, there's a theoretical approach which is all about the how of change. With theory, we can explore some of the big questions. What kind of change should we aspire to, and how can this be achieved? But we don't just talk. We've also got to apply some of this thinking. So, through the applied approach, we're looking at specific policies and trying to understand how they can most effectively be put into place. Although we try not to limit ourselves, we do focus on a few key areas. Due to our location, for example, the Asia-Pacific region is an important area of research for us. At the moment, we're doing a lot of work on urbanization, and there are two elements to this. One is employment, as urbanization leads to major employment problems, and the other is housing. With so many people moving to cities, many of them struggle to find a place to live. Other issues of particular interest to our staff are migration and, of course, trade. So, what will you be able to do with a degree in development studies? Well, firstly, you'll develop a full working knowledge of all aspects of development. You'll also learn how to gather data. We include sessions on how to gather statistics, but we mostly focus on textual data, that is, policy briefings, research reports, and so on. Once you've done your research, you need to know what it all means. After all, there's not much point in collecting a whole lot of data if you don't know whether it's significant or not. So we're going to teach you how to critically evaluate your findings. And finally, Teamwork is a big part of development work. Your major piece of research work for this class is done in groups of four, so you're going to learn how to cooperate as a team in order to plan and conduct this research assignment. I want to move on now to give you a brief overview of how development studies has evolved as a discipline since it was first established. The first thing to note is that Unlike other subjects, such as mathematics or philosophy, development studies is very young. It began taking shape as a formal discipline only in the 1950s. At that stage, economic concerns were at the forefront of nearly all research efforts. Researchers assumed that development in general could be measured by indicators such as gross domestic product, GDP, or unemployment levels. In the 1970s, a new set of scholars took charge. These researchers, informed by the social movements of the 1960s, brought a new set of issues to the table. At that time, development studies grew increasingly critical of established practices and the assumptions that lay behind those practices. Questions were raised in three areas. The role of power in creating policy, the importance of environmentally sustainable change, and problems with inequalities in terms of gender. From the 1980s onwards, the economy staged a comeback as a centerpiece of development practice. A key factor here was the reduced significance of national governments 
due to a number of market-led reforms in many countries around the world. In contrast to the 1950s, however, researchers have recently shown a heightened interest in smaller-scale economic projects. One significant innovation here is the idea of making tiny loans, sometimes only a few dollars, to help women in particular to start up a small business. And that brings us to today. So let's finish now by talking about... That is the end of section four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Once you would be finished with the task, you will have some time to check your answers and write them down. Okay, so uh, I'm sure uh, we all have got the answers. Let's, let's make this interesting. I'm going to uh, display the answers from 31 till 38. Right, let's make sure whether we have got the answers correct or not. Do you notice this one thing that there is one word each against every single option? Right, because the instruction clearly says write one word only. Right, so this makes this tricky because uh, we have to just write down one word. Okay, so if you have missed the instruction, your answers will go wrong. Okay. So how many of you have got these answers correctly? Write down in the comment section. If you have any doubt uh, regarding these eight uh, options, please do write that down also. And I will make this interesting. Please help each other. Also, I will be there uh, checking your comments. If, if it, it will come to me, I will write down the explanation also. So you do not have to worry about it. But yes, do write down the answers, okay, or the doubts. Now, uh, 31 to 38, we have got it. As I promised you that there is going to be a bonus tip, okay? While I was solving this question number 39, right? I got confused whether we have to write down gender as the answer or inequality as the answer, right? Because it was confusing. Now, the idea here is that the answer would be gender issues right because under gender comes gender inequality under inequality gender cannot come right so we the broader issue here is gender issue right so this is the bonus tip for all of you make sure you use a bit of logic also right also you must be thinking sir what happened this 40 is left. Yes, this is for all of you to do. Write down in the comment section what is the answer for 40th question. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please do like, share and subscribe. This is Mohammad Shiz signing off.